So hello everyone, welcome to the Notary Project Maintenance Track. So my name is Yi, I'm current uh, Notary Project Maintainer. I'm also a senior product manager at Microsoft. Currently I'm focusing on the cloud native security and the ecosystem. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Mustafa. I work with uh, tech leaders and teams to adopt the cloud native technologies. Also I am the um, co-organizer of the CNCF uh, Chicago chapter. Okay, thanks Mustafa. So actually, today I'm a bit excited to have Mustafa here join me as a co-speaker. So Mustafa is a new user of Notary Project and he has been uh, exploring Notary Project recently and he also would like to contribute to Notary Project uh, in the community in the near future. And uh, uh, today Mustafa will sh first share his uh, user perspective of the container security and also the notary project. And the later on, uh, he will be uh, demonstrating uh, the experience on how to get started with the notary project tool and notation for sign container images and the verified container images. And for me, today I will give you an overview of notary project and what we have achieved so far, what is ongoing and what will come, uh, come next. And also I will be uh, demonstrating uh, a new feature timestamping uh, which will be released very soon this month. And uh, um, at the end, we will conclude uh, our session by uh, Q&A. Okay, so Mustafa, over to you. Thank you, uh, You probably have heard or seen this in the last uh, few years, supply chain, software supply chain attacks are on the rise, and especially those targeting cloud native uh, platforms and applications. And if you think about this for a minute, if you are, I'm not assuming, but if there is a bad actor or an attacker, you want to attack those commonly used tech stacks with the highest vulnerabilities. Not saying that Kubernetes has high vulnerabilities, but the end or, or the intersections of those uh, for, for attackers is very, very appealing. Okay, we'll move on to the next. Um, most of us have been contributed to software, open source, or other, and I've done one of those things before. Uh, you write your code, you push it to a source control, it gets built with a build system, assuming we are using application containers, deploy it to a, a, a container registry, and then the applications are running. Everything looks great, unless there's someone look, looking to do harm here. For bad actors, they have plenty of things they can play with and, and kind of exploit the system. We call this, in cybersecurity, the attack vector. Where can I go and uh, enter the system and do whatever I want to do? It could data breach, it could be malware, ransomware, you name it. Uh, one of the things that you have probably seen before is I pushed my container, uh, container uh, application container to the registry and then someone is able to tamper with it. Um, one of the other things is code injection. So I wrote the code to do one particular thing. It's still doing that thing, but it's doing other things I didn't intend to. For example, Bitcoin coin mining. We have seen those a lot in cloud environments. That's because the bad actor is able to exploit the system at many, ent many entry points. And if you think this is not gonna happen to you, I would highly recommend you think again. It's just a matter of if, not when. And it could be overwhelming, I'm 100% with you. So one of the things to do about this is to look at this, have a holistic view. So, uh, a software supply chain is much bigger than just signing an image and verifying it. There are lots of things to be, uh, to be done in terms of scanning images, uh, auditing, and the like. But we believe that signing and verifying your images, it's a great point to start. And the reason is very simple. It almost does not cost you anything. You probably have used public key infrastructure before. Even if you just log into your bank account online, you're generating keys and using a, a private and public key and certificates. You can integrate it easily, I would say, in your CI CD. And uh, you can get started as soon as 
tomorrow other than other solutions like scanning other which is very very important but it might take you a while because you have to go and vet the different tools and, and then integrate them with your system in this workflow we are enabling the developer to to uh, or kind of we can ensure that he or she is the last person to touch the software we're talking about application container here and he or she is the author of the software those two pieces will give us kind of peace of mind when we have a software to actually deploy in production. We're making sure that any tampering with the software, we are able to detect it early on. For example, here, I can verify the image. If I can put a policy in place. If the image is unverifiable, I'm not going to deploy it. You don't have to do uh, this like across the board, but at least you can think about it for the most critical workloads, maybe in your production environment. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Yi to talk about the Notary project. Yeah, thanks, Mustafa, for sharing your insights on the uh, container security, uh, and also pointing out that signing container images is actually uh, essential for ensuring the authenticity and the integrity of the container images. And actually, this uh, aligns perfectly with uh, Notary project mission. So our uh, mission is to safeguarding uh, the software supply chain uh, using authentic container images and uh, uh, artifacts. So Notary Project currently is uh, incubating CNCF projects, and in the community, we have maintainers from um, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and uh, Docker. And uh, as I said, our mission is to securing the software supply chain using authentic. Uh, container images and uh, artifacts throughout the life cycle of container images. So Notary Project Components. So in the community, we create uh, cross-industry specifications. We call it Notary Project Specifications. And we have a few uh, specifications I list here. For example, signature specification and also sign and verify uh, workflow specifications. And uh, so, um, so you can build your own libraries and the tools based on these specifications. But if you, um, that if you do not prefer to um, do everything from scratch, we also uh, deliver libraries. You can build in your tools or services using these libraries. For example, um, uh, we have a, another open source project, Ratify, using uh, the Notary project tools to build the service that's running on the Kubernetes to validating the images before, uh, before the deployment. And also, we also deliver um, the tools called the Notation tool. And you can use the tools directly on any platform for signing and verifying container images. And also, um, the Notary project, uh, the tools libraries, we are building this Plugbro framework. So with this framework, you are able to integrate with different key management systems that are provided by different vendors. For example, we already have uh, the plugins from uh, the vendors you can see on the screen. And we, we have plugins for the uh, AWS Center. We have plugins for the Azure Keyword, Azure Trusted Design. And we also have plugins for the Wonderfy projects and also HashCorp plugins. And recently, I think just in recent months, Alibaba Cloud also uh, open source their cloud uh, secret manager plugins for, uh, for the notation tooling. So with this plugin framework, you are able to integrate with different uh, cloud provider based on your solution. And also, what's more, you can also customize your sign and uh, verifying workflow with different plugins. And on top of that, we are also actively integrated with uh, uh, various CICD uh, solutions. So currently, uh, the Notary project, we, um, we uh, build the GitHub Actions for sign and verification flow. And actually, I have another session in the afternoon. I will walk through with you uh, the end-to-end -end flow of how to use GitHub Actions for sign and verification. And also, we have the integration with uh, Arrow DevOps. So uh, these are the uh, components that uh, uh, Notary Project consists of. And also, 
Um, if you want to contribute to uh, Notary Project or want to collaborate with us, you can see you have many ways to do that. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, the benefits of Notary Projects, I list a few. Uh, Mustafa, uh, Mustafa also mentioned that we have uh, uh, the solution building on the well-established PKI infrastructure. And I just uh, talk about the extendability through the pluggable uh, framework. Uh, and also one important benefit that is not a project compliant to the OCS specification. So if you are not familiar with the OCS specification, OCS stands for the Open Container Initiative. So it defines standards across different vendors for storing and distributing uh, artifacts across uh, OCI registries. So with this standard uh, um, way that, uh, for example, if you sign uh, the container images, you produce the signatures. Uh, the signatures and the container images can be moved around across different OCI registries, even within multi-cloud environments. Uh, another benefit is that uh, not a project we support uh, two uh, signature formats, uh, JetBus and also COSI. The COSI format is actually a concise and a binary format. It's uh, extremely uh, useful for the uh, IoT and Edge um, scenarios. Um, and we also um, provide this uh, uh, framework for fine-tuned trust policies. So for notary projects and also the tools, you are using, uh, actually you begin with zero trust. So you don't trust anyone, but you can define who you trust with the trust policies, and these trust policies can be defined for various images from different source. Last but not least for the security audit. So in the project, in the notary project community, we regularly conduct the security audit. So for our first stable release, we also uh, conduct this uh, um, security audit by uh, a third party uh, organization. And uh, with this security audit, you can be sure that our tooling is uh, secure and uh, reliable. And you can see also on the right side, we have uh, um, um, adopters from major cloud providers and also popular uh, open source projects. And the number of uh, adopters are also increasing. Okay, um, some milestones. So um, what we have achieved, so last year we released uh, uh, the very first uh, stable release of a notary project specification and also the tool notation. And also we, as I mentioned, we conducted the, uh, the security audit by a third party um, to prove that the tool and the specification are secure and also reliable. And the first release, we, um, we provided a very fundamental features for uh, notary project tooling. Then after that, we re released the notation uh, v1.1. Uh, this version, we um, enhanced the plugin framework so that the user can easily to install the uh, plugins and also distribute the plugins based on the convention. So currently, we are working on the notation tool 1.2. Uh, release. Uh, it will be very soon released um, uh, in this month. So the feature we deliver will be um, the timestamping and OCI specification 1.1 uh, compliance. For the timestamping, it is the feature that uh, to extend the signature that was generated before the certificate expiry. So it's very helpful to avoid the resign images if the certificate expires. And also it's uh, extremely uh, critical for the short-lived certificates that becomes very popular uh, in, in the industry. For the OCI specification compliance, uh, the 1.1 the one stable release is just uh, released recently. So we are uh, working on uh, to comply with the OCI specification 1.1. After that, we will um, release notation 1.3 uh, release. In this release, we will include the revocation checking with uh, CRL, uh, Certificate Revocation uh, List. This is an, another way uh, for revocation checking. For the first stable release, we support the revocation checking with uh, OCSP. 
Then after that, we will conduct a security audit for this year uh, for the notation tool. So in the future, uh, in notation uh, way two, and also the specification, we plan those um, um, epic features. The first one is sign arbitrary blobs. So with this feature, you are able, to, for example, to sign uh, um, arbitrary blocks like uh, your release assets, uh, like the um, spawn file, soft beer of material file, uh, some um, uh, metadata file related to the container images. And the next will be the sign OCI image layout. Uh, if you are not familiar with the OCI image layout, it's actually a directory structure on file system. So with this feature, you don't have to push the image to the registry first and sign it. So everything can happen on the file system that you trust. So you, you are able to sign images as OCI image layouts on your file system without pushing to the registry. Um, the third one will be the attestations. Attestation is also quite important. So signatures can, um, can attest the authenticity and the integrity. But from an image, they are very, there are actually other perspectives that you, you need to validate. For example, uh, provenance information, I think, uh, just shared in the Salsa uh, session uh, by the Laiji folks. And also, uh, for example, the vulnerability reports and also some other uh, image metadata that is very useful to approve that the image is trust. Okay, that's the milestone. Uh, with that, I hand it over to you, Mustafa, for the for the user stories. As you guys have seen before, most of cloud providers today uh, here in China and the U.S. are already using uh, notation. So you're going to be maybe you already used the notation indirectly be before. Uh, those are two of the open source project. Harbor is a container registry, and it has the ability there to sign and trust uh, images. It gives you the option to use cosign, which is based in Sigistore, another open source tool to uh, to sign and verify images. Um, project uh, uh, Kiborno, it's an op a policy engine that allows you, when you, when you, for example, you have an image uh, sign it, it's time to deploy it in, in your uh, servers, uh, worker nodes. You can for, uh, reject those images that are not verified. So it's a policy agent that has already Notion integrated with it. And uh, if you are adopting project Notion, we would love to hear from you. You could be in this board w w with your company name and logo. We would love to hear your use case uh, uh, and the adoption story. And with that, we're going to move on to the demo. Yeah, let me switch to the video. Okay. Okay. Right. This is a very simplistic uh, um, <laughs> demo. Guys, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is just I'm going to sign an image and then verify authenticity. Again, two things, that the person who authored the image is that person who claimed they are, and the image has not been tampered with in the process. First step is to create a registry. This is just in my local machine, assuming I don't have access to a registry, and then I add the image to the, to the registry, as you can see here. And then the image will have a, what we call a digest. You can think of it as a signature for each image. You can, the SHA, the very long <laughs> alphanumeric. When actually you put your images or when I pull your images from a container register, you can use that and instead of saying uh, engine X version 1.2, you can use the digest. It's uncommon, but it's, it's doable. And then I want to list here the signature associated with the container image. That's the SHA I'm talking about. And then what I'm doing next is to, uh, yeah, here is the 
this image, I'm making sure this is not signed already. There is no, no, no associated signature. And then I want to list, um, this should be, yeah, step number four. I'm going to create a test key. This is self-signed. You are more than welcome to use your own key management system or a, sing a single, single key generated for security. That's much, much stronger, of course. This is for testing purposes only. Please do not use it in production, especially Friday night. <laughs> So now I have the, you know, in the second uh, half here, you see I'm making sure I have a key generated. I will make sure I have a cert as well. Th th those are two files. And that particular location, you see that path I have in, here in, uh, in my system, that is usually what we call the trust store. If you're not familiar with the trust store, you can think of it for now as just a, a folder that has all my certificates, and i 100% sure nobody's going to tamper with this. You maybe have seen it if you program it in Java. The, the concept is very similar, trust store. If someone gets access of the key, the whole thing we're doing here is, <laughs> is useless. So we're assuming somehow you're going to be able to protect the key. OK, now I, did, I, I was able to sign the image using that particular key. And then it tells me it is signed. And then the next step should be able to uh, verify the authenticity of that image. Uh, okay, sorry, just create a trust policy first. Trust policy is what's gonna, um, so assume, for example, you're gonna sign your image, and then you can specify only those registries I wanna be able to sign images for, or those, those, those per this particular uh, registry I'm gonna be able to trust images for, or those particular images only. I can say, for example, engine X because it has high vulnerabilities or we had issues with it, with, with it before. This is what the trust policy is about. It's a simple YAML file. After that, we should be able to uh, to take a look at the, uh, the yeah, that's uh, that's the trust store. We should be able to uh, to import that trust policy. I think that's pretty much it for uh, for image verification. I think the last thing you want to do is some some cleanup because we created some sort of a local registry. So uh, yeah, we'll verify the image. Okay, that's. Uh, couple of uh, things I forgot to mention, guys, is the. Uh, Image signing and verification is for OCI artifacts. Containers is just an example. You can still use this for your source code for other artifacts. And we're assuming here you're going to protect your key one way or the other. Please do not use self-signed certificates or any of those. I think that's, that's, that's pretty much for uh, image. Thank you. Thanks, Mustafa. Uh, actually, what Mustafa just demoed is uh, as a new user, how to get started with Notary Project, especially the tool, notation tool. And all these uh, instructions and guidelines are available on the Notary Project uh, website. You can also follow that uh, instruction to, to repeat the same thing that as Mustafa demoed. Um, what I'm going to share is the new feature that we are going to uh, release uh, very soon. It is called timestamping. Let me switch to the... Uh, sorry, let me use the video because it's not easy to uh, control the video. Yeah, let's use this one. So as I said, that uh, timestamping extends the trust of the signature that's generated before certificate uh, expiry. So currently, I use this image and check. 
use notation list to check whether the image has signature. I have uh, no signature. Um, okay, so the first uh, uh, case I'm going to demo is how to generate the signature with timestamping. So basically it will, it is the same command as uh, Mustafa just showed, but additionally uh, for the notation sign command, we use additional flag. One is timestamp URL. You can specify the address of the timestamping authority that you trust. Another flag is the called timestamp root certificate. Is actually the certificate of this, uh, um, the root certificate of the uh, timestamping authority. Is actually the trust, the root of the trust to avoid a man in the middle attack. So that means I trust the third party to generate a timestamping to approve that the signature is generated at a certain point. And this is the address of the timestamping authority server, and this is the root certificate that I trust. So I established this trust with this notation sign command. With that, I can I continue to sign successful I use the notation list command again. I have one signature, it's a tree view. Okay, then let's use another command, notation inspect. This is actually another very useful uh, command. You can inspect the signatures. So you can see the output. Uh, in the output, it will show the certificates and you can see this certificate will expire on August 20th. So actually it's already expired. And also you will see another timestamp signature information. You can see the time that the um, signature was generated is actually before uh, the certificate expiry. You can check uh, the time and also uh, there are some certificate information from the sign authority, uh, from the uh, timestamping authority. Okay, so with that, we successfully sign container images, and we also have the timestamping information to uh, prove that the signature was generated before the expiry. So that's from the signer point of view, from the image producer point of view. Then I'm switching to uh, image verifier point of view. Okay, I started with this arrow. And actually, um, I'm verifying a container images. And I use this flag verbose to show more log. You can see the verification fail with this reason, and it said the certificate expelled at this time. Um, just for record, I use another uh, certificate to demo the verification, not the same one as the, the uh, sign. Okay. So the certificate expelled without timestamping the signature, if the certificate expired, without timestamping the signature verification should fail because the expired certificate can be compromised. It can be used for some purpose. So the expired certificate signed uh, image, we should not pass the signature verification. This is without timestamping because we, we need to have a, a third party, trusted third party to approve the signature was generated before certificate expire. We cannot just be told that, yes, we, we signed these images and the signature is uh, before the expiry. So we need a trusted third party. And again, we use this notation inspect command to inspect the signature. And you can see Yeah, this is the digest. Uh, and you can see for this certificate that the image producer used is actually expired on August 15th.
And the timestamp in signature shown that the signature was generated on August the 14th. OK, so this signature has time stamping information, so I should be able to validate whether the signature was generated before uh, certificate expires. So let's continue. Then how do I verify it? So to verify the signature with time stamping, so I need to first have this root certificate of the timestamping authority. That is the trust of the root, the, the, the trust anchor. I downloaded the root say certificate from this public address. For this demo, I use the DJ cert, the public uh, timestamping server. Okay. Then I create a new type of trust store. The type is TSA. The trust store name, I just give uh, a digit search, and I add this root certificate to this trust store. And after that, you can use notation third list to check. The store was created. Then after that, I need to create the trust policy, as I just uh, um, explained uh, during the slide presentation, that you, sh you can control the trust so let me first using this command to show the current trust policy. And I can uh, redirect this policy to a file. Then I can um, continue to edit this trust policy file. So it's easy for you to verify signature with timestamping. You just need to add additional type of trust store called TSA to the trust store field. And after that, you can use policy import command to import this trust policy. You just uh, update it and override the existing one. Then after that, you use not, uh, the policy show command to confirm that. OK, the timestamp in trust store was added. Then we have the trust store, which have the root of the trust of the timestamp server, and also we have the trust policy to list uh, the trust store that uh, the policy will use. Then we can, uh, we can go ahead to verify the image. OK, so this time with timestamping, the image verification is successful. So previously, the certificate is about. So with this timestamping, we have the confirmation from the trusted timestamping server that the signature is generated before the expiry. So this time, the verification success. Yeah, I think that's for the demo. Let me switch to the slide. OK, so questions. And actually, today we also have another notary project, Shui, here. Shui is actually an expert in both security and also engineering. So please take your chance if you have any questions. So yeah. if you have a certain set of images that are used already, which is like they're out there, they're used, and then later on, after they're built and deployed, uh, there are CVs. Is there a way you can just mark certain images as you know should not be allowed to pull down, or is there anything that can be done for that? So in your question, that you already have the images deployed, right? And you detect that uh, there are vulnerabilities, yes. right? So so you want to block using those images, right? Yeah. So actually, there are um, different ways. So first of all. For the image you already deployed, that is already passed some check, but uh, uh, vulnerability can be discovered over time, right? So during the runtime, you find it. I think you, 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 you should have some runtime checking for that images that has vulnerabilities, then, then your team needs to verify that. So one way is that you can um, 
you can push an annotation to that image to mark it. Because that image is stored in the registry, you can push another um, annotation is actually, um, as I explained, uh, based on the OCI standard, you can push a notation associated with, with that image to put that image end of life. This is one way. Then you can have the uh, policy engine to avoid some other deployment to using that image. But once you fix uh, the vulnerabilities in that image, normally it will create a new image. Yeah, the digest is the difference. Then you need to sign that images, and uh, maybe you will also have some vulnerability report to prove that certain um, vulnerability are fixed. Then you also sign it. Then that images can be pushed to the to the to the registry for for production. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for the for the uh, for the AWS um, um, plugin, so currently they delivered is the plugin for the AWS signer. Yeah, AWS signer is actually a sign authority that represents user for sign um, content images and also um, maintain the key and the certificates. So it's the AWS signer. And we have uh, maintainers from Amazon that working in the community, and they will be responsible for that uh, plugin. And also, uh, they probably will also uh, open source that uh, AWS signer plugin very soon. Yeah. OK, already open sourced. Yeah. AWS signer, you, you can just search that. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it it's actually doesn't matter. The registry is in public or in on your premises registry, so it still works because uh, the technology behind that is to approve the images is uh, uh, images authenticity and integrity. For example, if you want to across some images from public, or if you publish your container images in the public registry, right? You want your customer to make sure that the images was created by you, and also when you distributed your image from your own premise to the, to the public, you need to make sure the image was not uh, uh, modified by someone else. Yeah, it's uh, it's still useful because um, when you deploy your images on on maybe you, on your uh, Kubernetes service or on any cloud provider uh, service, you still need to make sure this images was not uh, modified and also um, signed by your team, right? It could be. Let, let me clarify. So you're saying if it's if my registry is behind the firewall, right? Yeah. It's only my employees can access. So. We are assuming here zero trust. So with yeah. that, actually, most in the field, most of the bad actors, and this is not a stereotyping or anything, are former employees. Or people who still have access to the systems, they should not have access. But it's not like someone, a stranger, is going to go and attack someone who already worked with them, know the system, how it works, and we still want to get them. So to prevent all those assuming zero trust is to always register. It's like going to your bank account online. You've been there many times. If certificate is expired, are you still going to be able to log in and check your bank account? I doubt. Yeah. So actually, some information to add as the salsa session. So actually, today, traditionally, for for the uh, for fixing issues, we we have our application running on, for example, Windows, Linux. 
then publish uh, this uh, security fix to fix that. That is mostly on, on the right side. The, the image, uh, your application already delivered on, on, the, on, the, on, on your customer side. And actually today we see the secure supply chain attacks is shifting to the left. So your um, build system, your internal, maybe there are some internal bad actors. So something can happen on, on the left side. So you need to make sure that the image you build is really coming from someone and not modified things built. So the sign is actually very critical for, for this. For ensuring this, yeah, okay. should we please? So let's say they are talking about third part and the insider attack. But sometimes people just have mistakes, right? They can just uh, okay, I accidentally pushed an image from the sales environment to the production, and it got deployed. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have a signing process, we only define the production images. And if uh, you accidentally uh, push a bad image to uh, the production registry, or because it does not have any certificate, no um, uh, signature. So your production cluster wants to deploy it. So it's safe, right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys, for sticking around. That was stay with you, you and lunch. Enjoy your lunch. And yeah, thank you. And also, we have a project booth, not a project project booth, over these three days. So if you have any more questions, you also want to do some hands-on, just come to the booth, we can show you.